So I've had this question pop up a few times about how exactly we work through this PPF. Now, if you were struggling with this, if this was a question that you were having as well, don't get too distressed, don't get too worried about this. These honestly were a bit of the challenge questions. How to solve these were not worked through in any of the videos or you won't find this in the text. This was entirely, you would need a bit of critical thinking. You would have to work through these steps as well. So that being said, I'm actually quite happy too that these are the questions students are having troubles with because, well, yeah, they're the challenge ones. They're the ones you should be having troubles with. So let's take a look at how exactly we solve this. Uh, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to identify, well, it helps if I actually have a real color here. There we go. We're going to want to identify our big bits of information. So we have some country, and if they were to shift all their production to guns, they could produce 76 guns. So, okay, that's this B here. That's going to be 76 guns if I were to put everything over there. Uh, what else do we have? They also face an opportunity cost. So we have an opportunity cost of 0 0.4 gun per butter. So that's our bit of information. What, uh, what, what do we do with this information? Well, what we do with it is we can recall that our slope of these production possibility frontiers are often our opportunity costs. Be careful though, don't just go and throw this over there. Let's think about what a slope is, right? Our slope is the change in y over change in x. That is the rise over the run. So if we take a look at those units, our rise is in terms of butter, our run is in terms of guns. So rise over run would give us some number, butter per gun. Uh-oh. We have an opportunity cost of 0.4 guns per butter. That is, we have the inverse of what we're looking for. Well, okay, we can, we can still work with this. We can take this one here, and we can go 1 over 0 0.4 guns per butter. 1 over 0.4 will give us 2.5, and dividing by a fraction causes this fraction to flip and multiply by this, so we get 2.5 butter per gun. Which, hey, butter per gun, that's the opportunity cost we're looking for. So there we go, 2.5 is our new opportunity cost. From here, what we're looking to do is we're looking to solve for this value of A, and the units of this are going to be butter. So, okay, we have butter, we have guns, we have guns. Essentially, we're going to get these gun to cancel out and leave us with just butter. Maybe just looking at the numbers, this pops out to you as to how we do this. If not, let's take a look mathematically how this whole process happens. We have a line, right? Production possibility frontier is just a line, which means it can be expressed as y equals mx plus b. Okay, what are all these values? Maybe you've forgotten this. It's been a while since you've seen it in this format. Y is our vertical axes. So, okay, in this case here, Y is our sticks of butter. And that equals M. What is M? Well, M is our slope. Keep in mind what we have here. We have a downward sloping line. This is a negative sloping line but we typically write our opportunity costs in a positive way. 2.5 butter per gun, because it's a cost and a cost is implicitly negative. So when we take this and put it into our function to be the slope, we wanna make sure we put in negative 2.5. So the slope is negative, and that's because we have an opportunity cost. Carrying on, x, well, x is the number of guns that could be produced, so instead of x, let's just write g. And then finally, finishing off is this little lowercase b. This lowercase b is our vertical intercept, so where our line intersects the vertical axes, so a in this case. So we now have our equation of the line, and you're looking at this, and you're going, okay, great, Keith, this didn't really help us. We now just have three unknowns, the only thing we have is our slope. So what did that do? Well, no, no, we actually do no more than this, right? Keep in mind, y and x, b and g, these are just coordinates off of this line. And this intercept point here, this horizontal intercept, is a coordinate as well. 
such that at this point we have 76 guns. And although we have 76 guns, we are all guns, meaning we have zero butter. So I could go zero equals negative 2.5, 2.5 times 76 plus A. And hey, now we have everything but this intercept that we're looking for. So let's go solve this. Let's move this 2.5 times 76 over. So we have, we're adding it to both sides. So we're now gonna have 2.5 times 76 equals A. And 2.5 times 76, well, that is 190 equals A. Where A, again, keep in mind, is the amount of butter we could produce if we shifted all of our production into butter. So it looks like this is our answer. Let's just double check though. Let's go back and work through our units and make sure things are actually working out properly. That is, let's go just back it up one step right here to this 2.5 times 76. 2.5 what times 76 what? So let's take a look at that. 2.5 butter per gun times 76, well, 76 guns. So, hey, we have butter on the top. We have guns on the bottom. We have guns on the top. So guns and guns cancel each other out. And we're left with 2.5 times 76 is 190 sticks of butter. So sure enough, this answer lined up as we work through the equation. And with our units as well, it makes sense that this is it. I mean, the whole time you're probably looking and you're like, Keith, it says the answer right here. Well, shouldn't that have been good enough? Yes, but say you're in a test situation and it doesn't have the answer to compare to. How would you know, right? And following through units is always a great way to check. Okay, there's another question quite similar to this. Uh, let's jump over to that one and take a look. Let's just erase all my annotations here because they'll just follow us forward. And close that and go to question two. Okay, so it looks very similar. I would almost say at this point here, if you haven't come across this question yet, just pause this video, see if you can work through this one based off of what we did in that last video. It's actually done the exact same way, we just have the opposite information. So pause it, see if you can work through it yourself. If not, well, let's get started. Okay, so what do we have here? We have um, ah, sorry. There we go. Back at it. We have 70 sticks of butter. So if we did all butter, that's this value of A here. Let's update that. We have 70 sticks of butter. Farther, we have an opportunity cost of 4.9 butter per gun. Okay, so opportunity cost of 4.9 butter per gun. Okay, does this work as our slope? Our slope is rise over run, so our slope is butter over gun. So yeah, this is our opportunity cost and it is also our slope. Keeping in mind, I'm writing it here positive, but it is a downward sloping line. So technically this is a negative slope. What are we looking for? If we shifted all of our production to guns, how many guns could we produce? So what is this value of B is what we're looking for. Well, we can solve this the same way. Uh, we can go through this and we can say, okay, we know that Y equals MX plus B. And in our case, Y is sticks of butter. Our slope is negative 4.9. X is how many guns, and B, well, we actually have the value of B this time, that's 70. Okay, so again, you're like, oh no, we have two unknowns. Well, no, we don't actually. We're looking for this value, and so this value of B, well, okay, that I don't know, but, um, sorry, got totally mixed up there because I have two Bs. Let's just backtrack. 
That's the problem. We have butter and then B over here for guns. We're looking for this value of B, yes, but this value of B is our guns, our horizontal axes, right? So let's just update that. Just I erase the B. Let's just call this G, right? This is what we're looking for. If we were to produce all guns, how many guns could we produce? The big takeaway with this right so how many guns could we produce this is our unknown we do know however how many sticks of butter we could make when we're making this many guns that is when we're making all guns we're making zero butter so we could update that to zero that is what do we have we would have zero negative 4.9 guns plus 70. I'm going to move this whole bit here. I'm going to add it to both sides just to get rid of this negative. And so what I'll get is 4.9 G equals 70. Do a little bit of division there. Divide both sides by 70 or by 4.9. So G equals 70 divided by 4.9. And we get 70 divided by 4.9 is 14.2857, or to two decimal places, that's 14.29. So again, we have our answer, 14.29. If we wanted to check, make sure that our units actually worked with that, let's just go back just this one step right to here. 70 divided by 4.9. Well, again, 70 what divided by 4.9? What? Well, 70 butter. 70 butter divided by uh, 4.9 butter per gun. Okay, again, just kind of split this in half. We have our numerical side, which we know 14.29. And when we divide by a fraction, we take this denominator, we flip it, and we multiply it to the numerator. So we have 14.29 butter times guns per butter. Butters cancel each other out, and we're left with 14.29 guns. So yes, our units worked. Yes, we actually got the answer we were expecting to get. So 14.29 and our steps to work through that. So hopefully that helps to work through these. Again, these were two of the challenge kind of problems. There will always be at least one of these in every test. Given that they're randomized questions, sometimes you might get two or three, unfortunately. Part of the reason why your quiz results are best out of three attempts. So hopefully that helped. If you have any other questions stemming from this or from the other quizzes, feel free to reach out. If I feel that it's a big question that we should bring up to everybody, I'll put together another video and post it to the frequently asked questions as well. Until next time.